Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, featuring a one versus one on Bois du Chatelet to find the map. Google it. I'll be providing the name, of course, in the description, so you can just Google it there. Should be the first or second result of whatever you find. When Googling, we shall be watching Freestyler fighting for the Wehrmacht, fighting for the 352nd Infanterie Division in a fight against Sievo No Lucky Strike, fighting for the Americans, taking on the fight in the name of the 2nd Armored Division. Pushing onwards. In the name of Uncle Sam, both players starting out with the two engineer or two pioneer start, depending on which side you're looking at. First goes out first for freestyle or not much else of you'll probably seeing some right from right there, the three hundred and fifty second being rather one of the first divisions rather fight against the Americans, being who were the ones who actually held Omaha Beach and inflicted considerable casualties on to the Americans right there, partly because the Americans were expecting a considerably less experienced division. And also because that was pretty much the part of the Atlantic Wall that was actually considerably most finished. There were other parts not so far away which were in a considerably worse state. And that was certainly one of the problems. Partly again, they were not really worked on properly and more problematically, they were also worked on in a variety of ways without any sort of larger supervision. So you'd had one unit making bunkers in that way, and then you'd have someone build living quarters right in front of the bunkers, so the bunkers became useless. Plus, of course, the rear quarter chaps, or re rear area fellows, tended to steal all the good th stuff so they could make, of course, nice and comfy positions, but of course, rather failed to realize that, of course, meant they'd be overrun by the enemy. Yeah. We are seeing the Falcons moving out. We are seeing a swim wagon coming out second for Freestyler. Rather than moving about there so far, no real engagement. Of G about second as well from No Lucky Strikes, and that since they're rather close, each sort of mirroring each other right there. Fox guys moving up, and there we go. We are seeing the Shrim Ma no, the Jeep moving in from north, or the Shrim Magnus moving in from the south. And there we go, pushing in. The Fox guys pulling up behind a car near a flaming tree. Not entirely sure how that could keep on burning, but let's not discuss physics or thermodynamics for that matter. Shrim Magna pushes in, does a bit of damage, and the Rifle Act is suffering a bit, but the Shrim Magna and Fox combo is going to get pushed off. Man engagement over here, Pioneers fighting versus Engineers. Although, by the looks of it, yes, indeed, it was freestyle trying to take the point. The engineer's just jumping upon him. We do quickly see a bit of retreat there. Schwimmmagen holds up right here, though. Continues finding out the rifleman and gets one nicely done. The MG on the Schwimmmagen, or the bike for that matter, should not be underestimated. In particular, if supporting some troops, it can be quite nasty. An MG 42 following up on the Schwimmmagen, adding some considerably heavier firepower. And the pioneers continue fighting over here. They're not doing too well. Their cover is gone. The crates have shattered where the Americans are behind some considerably heavier ammunition crates. And there go the pioneers actually went down the shrimp magnus into avenge them, but not really looking good when you have two dead pioneers. That's definitely going to hurt Freestyler initially on his mission of capturing territory. Right, right here, they're getting punished. Down to two men. Jeep moves in to try and hunt down the shrimp magnus. Will it succeed? And there we go, Freestyler evacuating the Schwimmwagen. Another Falskern squad on the way for Freestyler. Falskern is moving in, doing a bit of harassment over here towards some engineers. Opening up with a great vengeance. And killing one engineer outright. And the Jeep sneaking about. So far, not looking too well for Freestyle. He's not really been able to sort of cause some permanent casualties to no lucky strike, although he has caused some nonetheless. Shrim Magen in dire need of repairs, actually. And looks like we are seeing a focus on the right hand side. Victory point being secured there. MG42 on the way. Munitions being secured there. West looks more or less lost. Right from quickly getting into the building right next, perhaps. And there we go. Wrong side of the heavy cover as well. That's definitely not helping up here. And the Fulton's getting pushed away from the north. And we are seeing another MG42 on the way for Freestyler. Two Fulton's, two MGs so far. A rather 
Solid tier one. And there we go, we actually seeing the Jeep charging in. We're seeing the MD42 doing what it can to stop the Northern as well. At the same time, the Jeep charges in. Schwim Magnet to turn about and stop the rifle right there. The cover's all been seized for the rifleman. This is looking to be a rather untenable position, but we are seeing a second MD42 moving up. Deep damaged engine, second MD42 set up. Flamethrowers on the Pioneers. The Pioneer releases Fiery Death and Browning Automatics are upgraded for the rifleman. Deep goes down in a shower of flame and shrapnel, but the other MG might get overwhelmed by the BAR rifleman. Trying to escape. Oh, barely makes out of there. Second MG42 moves in to take the spot, and we do see a full retreat right there. Deep down for no lucky strike. We definitely had no luck there, I suppose, in a sense, you can argue that. At the same time, though, we are seeing the West being lost for freestyle and more and more, but still. He was able to cause some damage to Freestyler right there, getting another false gun escort. Now he needs to get moving, he needs to secure some territory and possibly also consider mining some things. Once he gets the munitions for it, of course. So he doesn't quite have as much. In particular since most of the munitions points are in the hands of No Lucky Strike. Ooh. Engineers went down while still trying to mine. Lovely there, lovely there. Quickly summoning the Jeep for munitions. Excellent move there by Freestyle. That's definitely going to help. Skirmish phase on the way. MG are setting up there. Although, of course, I suppose in theory you could get flanked there. Although, of course, he would be able to spot it. Whereas, of course, in coming here is two. Where true sight would be effective. I mean. You wouldn't actually be able to spot an opponent moving through there until it was too late, and he was actually already up here. Of course, then it's going to be one of the more interesting things of Company of Heroes 2. False Guys, though, getting assaulted by the Ripen Stream Bank, a bit of support. False Guys qu quickly pull up in heavy cover, though. F mini victory point being secured there. MD42 could have advanced a bit further up, I think, to sort of cover this area a bit better. I'm mean, seeing a larger force going up here on the left side. Banker going up for. Flea Styler. He could do a bit, I think, with some wiring off here, trying to deny some cover for his opponent. Of course, make it harder for Lucky Strike to attack overall. The eyes in the rifle note getting rather heavily outnumbered. Shrim Magnet and Fulton is bearing down on them and leaving a few dead by the old burning car. Bank are almost done, and Heinz and Helmut and Fritz are waiting over here. Helmut, of course, keeping an eye on the trees. Never know of them. Moving up there on the flank, doesn't quite work out. The MG42 does put a stop to that defensive doctrine up for Freestyler. Right, moving up there, another squad moving in from the north. Of course, we have the far east right here. And of course, we do see it sort of shifting about, but at the same time, you know, a bit harder sort of to do that because you can then just sort of shift against the forces will we need to send in. And there we go. More pulling in there. I'm not entirely sure with Freestyle is suddenly abandoning all over here. That is a bit dangerous. Flame first burning away the rifleman. And there we go. Assault going in against the MG. Will the Fulton be able to turn it about? Fulton goes here. Needs to retreat, in fact, right away. MG stopping one part of the assault. But again, he has rather left this a bit too exposed. And there we go. Rifleman hitting the side of the MG. There's nothing he can do, it needs to just retreat. Retreating at the medic bunker. Come on, freestyler. Schnell, schnell. MG going to get overwhelmed, going to get killed. I fear maps, even the Americans will seize it. Oh, and the MG42 was cut down the retreat. Right here taking heavy casualties, but again, I mean he's just lost another squad. Do see a medic bunker up, but again, I'm not going to say this is the best sort of place. No, but I mean it's nice and central, but it's also nice and exposed. And of course, it's a bit tricky on this map since there's not so much like safe things. I mean, somewhere around here, I think it might have been a better choice. Still close to the front line, but again, not something that can just be hit from the front. You should always sort of be careful about that. And during again, that's why I sort of want to place it behind something. Partly, of course, had a bit absorbed fire. But of course, we'll just ensure that if the opponent wants to move, he has to sort of move into an angle that could expose himself to some fire from a more well placed position of yours. Fox goes though holding up here. Nice position, heavy cover. 15. 14 versus 6 man. Although, again, the rifle do have the BAS, but there we go. 
Hank goes down. Larry and Zipovitz consider moving elsewhere. Small movement up here. We are seeing an attempt at the assault phase. Another MG42 up for Freestyler. So he's clearly hoping for the might of the Sturm Armory. Robin here getting held down by the MG42 hiding in a bit of a boggy area. Not buggy, but boggy, as in bog. Oh, artillery going in. We are seeing infantry doctrine up to go to blast out the crowd. Pioneers trying to hide inside the bunker. Fulska is getting hit by the artillery. And a unit went down somewhere. Ah, Pioneers went down over here. Robin here taking a bit of a blasting fall. The far land is up. MG42 hold up here, doing what he can against Robin in heavy cover. Fulska is moving in. And another artillery strike within minutes. Again, the Americans seem to have stockpiled quite a bit for this assault. Blowing up a bit of the nearby trees, in fact. Rough moving in. And, ooh, getting stopped by the MG. Could it be that Freestyle has already gotten the... Yes, indeed, looks like he has gotten the upgrade. Or the ability that allows his points to see much farther for him. Let's go look at Snow Lucky Strike. Bunker still standing, but clearly not the sort of place you want to spend your holiday in. Of general, you wouldn't want to spend your holiday in a bunker overall. Four riflemen up, we are seeing supply yard, medic station, no tree center, but we're also seeing a motor pool. We're seeing the flame front units moving in from the north. Point being secured. Fault's going to be catching on fire. And there go the Indians are pushed back with some considerable casualties, but not without also causing a few. In fact, several folks are caught on fire in a most unpleasant manner. No veterans as of yet, though, and we're already seeing two rifle escorts with veterans G1. Going for the fuel right there. Rather poor force projection by three sides, rather than con problems controlling the map. So not helping with the lack of mind from him. There we go, the rifle getting picked off. Moving up there, the MD42 here is right exposed. And of course, ah uh, yes, of course again. No victory points again. Oh, John points again with the defensive ability allows you to spot things better. And there we go, catching the rifle as they thought they were sneaking past. And they obviously weren't. And another flank here, rifle getting stopped by the old car flame for a pony swing into flank for the fun and pops up. Several riflemen go down. Heavy casualties. I mean, if Freestyle wants to focus down on this rifleman squad, he could actually lose it. It looks like it's not happening, and more artillery getting called in. We're here. I think. Apparently not. I thought I heard the roar of artillery. The thunder of guns. Crack, snackle, and pop of something gun. Kaboom. We're seeing the Fox quickly being shifted towards the right hand side. We're also seeing a Greyhound out. Which is definitely going to be a nuisance for Free Styler, since he's not got anything that can actually stop it at the moment. We do see the Sturm Armory up. Rifemen continue to suffer in front of the MG42. At the same time, I push up towards the centre, going straight for the bunker, hoping to burn it down. Panzerfaust being unleashed against the armor car. Oh, oh, right. We've taken quite a bit of damage right there. And the pioneers just repair the bunker while it's being burnt down. The losing ground out there. And again, Fultzko is getting shifted. Oh, another squad left behind to re-secure territory. So far, most of the victory points are German. Sturmgeschutz is out for freestyle. The 356 second, relying on the assault guns it had attached in his tank destroyer unit. Though they were actually designated as their own independent Stug. Brigade, in fact, to sort of mislead the Americans. Despite the fact that it's not even there enough to fill a company, I think, so. Go figure. Oh, well, just about a company, actually. Still. Such were the thoughts of the Germans sometimes, or at least the Führer, in trying to sort of fool the Americans to think there was more resistance than there was. Get back on the fight! Composition B is in. Troops can now make sticky bombs. Sticky bombs are out. 
full clear squad went down. We are seeing a grenade squad up, so certainly something was put together. Ravner moving in. Getting a nice drop on the grenadiers, already considerably low on health. They do get one American before they decide they have better places to be. In the meanwhile, Larry runs for his life, having seen his comrades die in front of his eyes. There's two rows about. And Titanian on the way, definitely going to help against the Sturmgeschütz. Of course, Freestyler could consider getting a neighbor rifle to help against the anti-tank guns. We are seeing a second assault gun out, the second storm gets sphere. Bunker getting repaired. MG still holding up here. Still interesting, he hasn't, for example, moved up to a position like this, where it can't actually be flanked or the Americans can't really hide. So that is actually a bit weird. I would at least thought that. But then again, I would also recommend at least you know keeping something else near it. We are seeing the Stug moving in again. Anti tank and ready. Bunker repaired. Second Stug moving in. Freestyle actually making some progress now, but he needs some veterans for his troops. MG actually got cleared out. Oh dear. Grenadier is coming under fire from right from here. Rather extend himself and his attention. Three stars getting hit from several places. Troops getting stopped here, but Attila getting called in again on the MG position. The Schwerpunkt of no lucky strikes effort. These folks are going to take up heavy beating, though, so do the Americans. Stu here holds off the Americans, causing one kill. Well, most of the armored units are moving in towards the center, plus the anti tank gun. And combined Grenadier force fighting against the rifle right here, although these Grenadiers seem to have moved away. Not doing too well there. Stuart going to deal with the armoured car. Anti-tank gun moving up. Of course, the Germans could try and assault it and perhaps even steal the anti-tank gun away. But again, that does involve they actually make a move. Rifle no arm quick to move up. Armoured car out. I would recommend a neighbor of now to help deal with the anti-tank gun. And Sturm shoots already taking heavy damage. Stu quickly crushes two riflemen trying to crawl away by the looks of it. Something else killed them anyways. Riflemen pushed away from the west. The center is looking considerably weak. And the Stu trying to hunt down the armor car. Knocks it out of control. But if, I mean, if Freestyler loses this, I mean, he's going to have lost more than actually cost to build an armored car. Now support rapid deployment. And sadly, there's no been real attempt to sort of assault the anti-tank. And of course, we could try and of course flank it from here. It looks like he might do that. In fact, MG holding up here for the final and up again. Flame throw upon here. It's moving in. Robin here getting gutted. And there we've got armor car moving in. But the anti-tank is actually pulling away, which could allow it to quickly just plonk down and open up on the anti the armored car. MG gets cleared out. Armor car gets caught right in front due to a crater of the anti tank gun. And now going to get sticky bombed by Rifeman. This is looking horrible for Freestyler. Stug though is somehow crawling back. And the armor car goes out of control. A shot to the rear. And the MG42 gets stolen. And oh, this one has been recruited by a few plucky folks, Grenadiers. Grenadiers are pulling up. Could do with an upgrade of some sort. An MG, for example, could help against the infantry, I think. Oh again, also getting some veterans. He's also going to benefit greatly. But the Grenadiers are considerably outgunned here. In particular since arriving of veterans here too. More German infantry moving up. By the looks of it, three Grenadier squads. MG42 pulled back to the barn. Question becomes, what will No Lucky Strike's next move be? He could, oh, he's going for a tank depot. He's escalating things. That's definitely going to help, going to give him increased mobility. Which is definitely where Stukes have problems. Of course, that would also mean it might be an idea for again to upgrade the Canadian though with Panzer Strix. Since MGs do considerably less against vehicles. Objective 
Second Stug up. Regis artillery going in against the north. Heading in the anti-tank and actually quite a bit. Oh, getting one of the crew members. Forcing away the rest of the forces is actually ooh, pretty bad for no lucky strike. If the German infantry was to fall upon it, they could steal it and move it back to a more secure position, creating something to back up the Sturmgeschutz. And there we go. Oh, the anti-tank looks like it will be escaping. Tank depot almost done. And there we go. Question becomes tank store or Sherman first. And we do see that the German infantry was quickly checked up to Vitsun C2 as soon as the Kampfkopf center went up, making them considerably tougher, at least the Grenadiers considerably tougher. And the MD-42 opens up, anti-tank and supporting as well, and it is quickly suppressed and killed. The rest are trying to get out of there, but they are exposed, they're caught out in the open. No veterans for the assault gun yet, and no Nebelwerfers. I really think he should consider getting some Nebelwerfers to rain rocket death down upon the Americans, make it harder for them to move about, and you know, also make it harder for the anti tank guns to be useful. Riven are pushing in for the final and up. These grenades are definitely going to have the advantage right here. Riven are taking considerable damage and casualties, so are the engineers. One grenade though catches on fire. Oh, engineer squad went down. Drive from Walter suffering here to the Grenadiers. <coughs> Grenade goes off the Drive and run. The West is safe for now. All this, most of the Grenadiers are there, leaving the considerably weaker Fulzkanis to hold. No. Most of them. Uh -oh. Curious that. Oh well. Stooks moving up, but how are they going to expose themselves? Where is the infantry support? Where is the infantry leading their way? And there we go, Stuke getting hit on the side, down to half health already. Stuke's a considerably little health. That should be remembered, and they're almost knocked out. Definitely not a so good assault gun tactics right there by Freestyler. Fighting in the center as the and tried to push up the second armor, actually getting a tank to throw out first, not a Sherman. I would have figured a Sherman first to help with the infantry further. Dukes are taking nasty, nasty damage. False guns and grenadiers are moving up. No attempt at actually upgrading a single one with a Panzer Shack. Hellcat taking nasty damage. Anti tanker needs to be dealt with. Pioneers getting blasted by the Hellcat. Two died with one shot. That's um, pretty rare. Stoops are in a terrible condition. I mean, a few shots from the Hellcat and they're going to be good night. No attempt at a panzer fast by the looks of it, just trying to get the anti-tank gun. MG though suppressing the German attackers. And Attila getting called in on the assault guns, hoping to finish off the job. Nice land, there we go. One Stug bites the dust immediately. Second one gets knocked out by the Hellcat, gaining veteran to one for the American tank destroyer. American Assault pushing in there in the west. Grenadiers for the final end once more. Cutting down the riflemen as they attack. Although they are getting rather thinned out. And the MD-42s hold up in the building as the Hellcat try to blast it out of the premises. Now the Stug arrives. And tank gun not recruit. It looks like, oh, who shall win this? The Grenadiers or the riflemen? Looks very close. Grenade goes off. Rifleman dodge it. And the Grenadiers retreat. We finally do see some veterans here for the assault guns. About bloody damn time. Volkskammer is moving up. They could try and secure the anti-tank gun, but instead runs straight into an MG42. Ah, but there we go. Grenadiers are flanking, forcing the MG42 away. Other rifle squad moving up. They're coming under fire from the MG with Red 21, by the way. They could try and secure the anti-tank gun. That would do nicely.
Riflemen are suppressed. I think Freestyle is actually considering moving his anti tank and further back. The sort of territory is in is now. The negative cover. It's not really good for moving backwards in which things first go awry, in which case it's going to be rather easily picked off. So it's just moving it back towards here. In particular, as now we are seeing no lucky strike pulling in with the sort, but no. The anti tank and stays. Rather than moving in. And there we go, the anti tank and is now trying to move, but again it is simply too late and it's going to get sorted out. Hellcat moving up here. No panzer or anything to help against the Hellcat. Second Stuke on the way. Second Stuke is ready. Pioneers were rushed away with barely anyone alive. Definitely not looking none too good. Riflemen down. Another rifleman bites the dust. The frog's going to hold up by the stream. We do see the rifleman running away. Hellcat moves up. One of the tank destroyers the Americans use besides the M18. Though it was not actually, from what I know, actually lend leased out to the Allies. That was only the M10 Wolverine. On the other hand, that was also used by the Brits and the Soviets. Heavy damage to the Grenadiers now, no. as the Sherman moves in. Sherman should not be underestimated while using infantry. Of course, this is going to force Freestyler to move over there and counter-attack. He could, of course, consider re-arming or manning the anti-tank gun and using this. At the same time, it looks like the Sherman might be going straight for his own base. And there we go, he is in fact. No lucky strike moving in, a rather bold play. Still not a sign of a panda effect for Freestyler and... Calling in artillery or the Storm Armoury. Stooks on. moving in, trying to knock it out. Anti-tank has not been recruited, had that been. They could actually have found on the Sherman as it was moving on the other way. Stooks getting hit by the really as artillery as it exits, exits, exits. Ah. The Storm Armoury causing considerable harm to it. And even risking jeopardizing the investment. Sherman, of course, trying to escape and looks like it will successfully escape even. And at the same time, chaos in the center as the Hellcats move through there. Not looking good at all for Freestyler at all. Hellcat moves in. Shot shot fires though. All of the Stooks miss! How rubbish. We have 300 points left. And he's moving up, could recover the. Oh, sandwich the Shermans right there. Not the Stoog actually. No, he's in fact putting down a bunker, could be a repair bunker, that would be a good move. Shermans continuing to be a nuisance. Assault guns being a bit stuck there. Engineers moving up. And more on the way from the tank there before the second armored. Medic bunker going up. And registered artillery somewhere. Probably the center. Right on the right. Oh, heavy losses down to one man. And looks like that man is a very lucky man as he escapes. The rest, though, are probably considerably less lucky. 
All three victory points, though, are in the hands of freestyle, so at least he's doing that all right. But he's got no base lift. There we go, recruiting the anti-tank gun. No punter strike. He can upgrade it now. And he's actually going for a medic bunker. Fascinating. Small engagement involved right here. Oh, veterans, he's free riflemen. This is definitely going to hurt. Already he has veterans, he free troops against free starters, veterans, he two grenadiers. That's definitely going to cause some problems. Second Sherman out. And the anti-tank gun ruins the surprise. This is fires at the engineers, ensuring that the Sherman will not peek out and get blasted at. Veteran T2 rifle moving up against the Veteran T2 Grenadiers. Rifleman down. Could there be a grenade off? There we go. Not killing anyone, but leaving the others considerably wounded. Rifleman is suffering. Two Grenadier Scorts versus... No, oh, one of them actually retreats. That was a bit of a mess. And here in the centre, things are not looking good either as the Hellcats and the Shermans focus all of their firepower into one spot. And there we go, grenades. And Veteran D2 on the way for the armour, that's definitely going to help the Stooks. Going to give them a health bonus and a machine gun, so that's not all bad. Forward, supply lines up open. Looks like he might be making an attack, although he probably should be pulling in the anti-tank gun to support then. And at the tank, oh! No luck to strike, has outgunned his Germans to take on the Stooks. And they will then actually have the advantage in fighting against the assault guns. Oh, and a unit went down. Looks like it to have been Fultz going to squawk. Went down to the Sherman's up guns. Let's go look at No Lucky Strike again. We can get off map comic groups now. If he so desires. And only one supply upgrade though. Artillery support is now available. Benedictus versus the Reifenmen. The Reifenmen are outnumbered and out veterans. It's interesting to note that, I mean, Freestyler seems awfully passive. He must be worried there might be anti tank anti otherwise, I mean, he would be pushing in to sort of just knock it out with his large and superior numbers. Right from right there are getting simply blasted by the MGs and the s main guns of the assault guns. Bit of movement on the right flank. Reinforcing again right there. And a veteran to do Hellcat gaining an increased penetration chance. Not much else though. A bit quiet at the moment. Freestyler though is definitely not looking too well. And here's in Fulton is moving in a small assault against the Rifemen. Freestyler needs They're to attack, he needs points. to do something to sort of try and give him some sort of advantage back. Rather than hold up here in what could be some sort of improvised trench. And the Rafter moving in versus two veteran T2 Grenadiers and they actually forced him away. Simply because Freestyle probably doesn't want to lose that many men, nor does he feel he can afford them. Right and right here, getting bombarded by the assault guns, taking considerable casualty. But we're seeing artillery getting called in on the assault guns. Oh dear! Oh dear, he's actually moving them forwards right into the line of fire of the Americans. And there we go. Hellcat gets off a cloaked shot. And that Stuke is definitely almost out of the game. Anti tanker needs to be pulled up. And 
This is looking horrible. This is looking bad. Stug out of control, and he has no way of replacing them because he lost his Sturm Armory. Nor has he actually spent any of his munitions towards Panzer Rex. There we go, second Sturm moving in. The anti tank and those sets up. Quite a bit of firepower now being leveled against the Sherman, at least the lead one. Stug taking a bit of damage. Hellcat now moving up. Veterancy free, actually. That is definitely bad news for the assault guns. Oh, the right there, the anti tank gun gets off a nice hit. But the Hellcat, though, continues. There we go, nice bit of damage. And Stoog goes down, and the Hellcat looks like it will escape. Destroyed engine, though. Second Stoog damaged engine. And no attempt to actually finish off the Hellcat by Freestyler. No attempt at a Panzerfaust or anything of Panzerfaust, though, is finally ready for Freestyler. About tam damn time. Anti tank, and though, cleared out. Stug down. And it looks like a slight save right there, but again, overall, this was a pretty unfortunate engagement. So many troops lost, although it looks like some grenadier squads might get reformed. But I think that is a small band-aid on an open wound. Not looking good at all. Anti-tank gun swiftly recruited by the few remaining German troops. Since that's pretty much the only real hope now is stopping the Shermans is not really good news for Freestyler. Of course we can try and sandwich all of this which should give him some more munitions towards upgrading his grenadiers but that should have happened quite some time ago. Flak 88 now going down. Called in from some nearby Luftwaffe Flak Regiment. Since that is where most of the heavier flak guns were, in fact. And the ones that weren't were usually in the hands of Panzer Divisions, as they were the only ones that could really warrant having those. Shan moves up and gets off a nice hit on the Grenadiers. Don't lose the Panzer's Rex Freestyler! One man left. And it's getting locked down. There we go. The flag 88 is revealed. Sherman gets hit though by the 50 centimeter. The shot though bounces off. While well, being stopped by the barn MG. Looks like they could actually go down if the grenade actually manages to surround them and cut them down. Down to one man. Casual oh! Veterans he free squat down for Sherman. No lucky strike. Oh, he's got another one. BRs though are quickly secured, increasing the grenadier's firepower. Grenades going off. Flak scoring a few kills on the infantry. And artillery going in right around the flak. Then it is such need to get away. Pack cleared out and a direct hit kills the flak crew. Oh bother. Now of course there's nothing to stop it. And he's actually ex sacrificing one of the BAR squads to recruit the flak. Oh dear, oh dear. And the flak goes down at the exact same minute. I mean, that's pretty much a gun to the air squad with BARs wasted. Flak down, Panda Trek is pretty much the only thing that Freestyle at the moment has left to deter the unholy forces of the Americans. I mean, uh, the glorious United States Army. <coughs> Enemy unit down. 
And another unit bites the dust. Another flank 88 is punked down in the hopes that the f second one will not suffer the same fate. The 350 second at this stage has pretty much been brutalized. And barely has anything left. He should at this stage consider either getting a new storm armory up or taking up words towards panzers. Instead of flax, which are going to be targets for the artillery. We are losing territory. Then we got another flak opening up. Sherman almost down, gonna do this finding here, but Graham now actually arrives out of nowhere. Don't send the grenadiers in, don't send the grenadiers in! Don't! Don't! Freestyler! Get them out of there! Oh dear, he's going to do it! Down to one man, Freestyler! Come on, retreat! Pull back! And now Pioneers are trying it. They're not faring any better at all. And the gun is here getting slaughtered inside the German base. Nothing to stop it. Well, Armour is holding up the centre as well. This is pretty much a disaster for the Wehrmacht, no matter how much you l what way you look at it. Rangers here getting suppressed, getting gunned down. While well, Volksgrenadiers and Grenadiers do their best to dig them out of the craters, but grenades flung into it immediately kill several Volksgrenadiers, leaving them clutching and screaming. Pioneers moving right hand side up to secure the munitions right there. Rangers were forced away by a considerable loss, leaving a lot less left to deal with the rather riflemen on the road. More death, and of course, the flag 88 can't cover anything, but this air, which also means it's a quite a considerable expense, it's not really cover a lot, in particular, since it can't even properly cover this victory point because again the Americans can cover it from here. And another squad arrived and gaining veterancy free. And a howard actually comes out for a no lucky strike. A flat goes down right next to the barn actually, but the barn takes a direct hit, killing the MG Krunzak, flinging them outside. Oh no. And another flak is attempted. Trying to win the war through a Luftwaffe asset and not the flying part, obviously. Though in company here too, there will be aircraft for the Germans and a larger a greater deal. I do believe we're looking at Stuka. Right here. This is definitely freestyling an awful lot of trouble. Rangers moving up there, kind of doing what they can. Flak down. Not even cancelled, so that's actually quite a bit of resources wasted. <laughs> Pioneer squad down. Another Grenadier squad. No apologies for the technical problems. Four Grenadier Scort, but Sand in the Medic Bank was not able to help him out too much. Partly due to the utter lack of upgrades for the Grenadiers. Ranger down, hit directly by the flak. Speeding things up a bit, a bit more artillery, directly hitting several Grenadiers. Sherman moving in from an angle where the flak can't hit it, staying nicely behind the remains of the barn. And the panzer check was oh, removed. Now they're going to escort down. In fact, now it's just down to three units. This is, yeah, GG. And there we go, GG from Freestyler. More Tiller getting called in. And there we go. So viel vet. So much veterans, yes indeed. And
game over, terrible loss of the 350 seconds, so many losses, I mean the attempt is sort of, you know, speeding up to a Sturm Armory was nice, but problem was for Freestyler that he never properly supported them with infantry, and I also think he perhaps could have done with less for the fun and more MGs or MP40s for his infantry. He was considerably very low on upgrades for the infantry, which definitely could have helped in the long run, I think. Medic bunkers were nice, but I don't think they were properly placed, in particular not the first one, that should not have been placed there. Mines was were also woefully lacking for Freestyler. He could also consider perhaps an observation post sort of help with munitions since he was using it so much. And also he needed a Nebelwerfer. He really needed some artillery, but sadly that never came. On the other hand, we saw great aggression from No Lucky Strike hitting several points. He was mining, in fact. He was being aggressive. He was attacking. He was getting Shermans. He was upgrading them. They really did a lot of damage. Two freestyle, that should never be un underestimated. I mean, 27 kills, 13 in this one. Well, that's not a Sherman, obviously. But overall, I mean, good use of his doctrine, good use of the units he had. Good aggression. And rather some passive play, I feel a bit too passive, at least for freestyler, which rather sorted in more than once. No lucky strike taking the advantage and getting away with it. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this match. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends? Also hope you learned something from it. And if you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own? Or provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane, St. Tears.